Now we will learn about the chapter New Empires and Kingdom. We have already learned about Ashoka. We have seen that he was a king who started writing about everything, his achievement, what he actually wanted from his uh, subjects, what he wanted to spread amongst his subject, everything. He started writing them down the, in the way of inscription and some of the time the how uh, whatever his orders that those also has written as edicts. So inscriptions and edicts we have seen at the time of Ashoka that has taken a major part to know about history. After Ashoka, after this time, we have seen that a new way of writing about the king that has taken place which actually worked marvelous for the people, those who were searching the truth about history. These all were known as Prashastis. Literally meaning of Prashasti is uh, to praise someone. So now whom they are praising? Naturally the king. Most of the Prashastis, rather we can say all of the Prashastis, they were written praising their ruler or their lord or the king. It is written in that way. Not all the time they have uh, they have uh, wasted their time in searching some place and then to write. Some of the greatest precious things are on the available site, what, what already was made by someone in the past. They utilized them and they wrote they are about their king on those rock pieces or rock uh, pillars on them. As like the prashasti that uh, told uh, that tells us even today about Gupta dynasty the most that it is Allahabad prashasti which is written on Ashoka pillar. It was already there from the time of Ashoka. Uh, the um, court poet of Samudra Gupta he has written about Samudra Gupta his achievement his genealogies on this. Allahabad Prashasti which is a great source of information about Samudra Gupta. So in this chapter about this new kingdoms we will learn about Samudra Gupta. Let me tell you something before we come uh, to the topic the exactly to this topic to Samudra Gupta. Gupta dynasty it was started from a very small place. The first two Guptas they were uh, we are not considering them as the founder of the Gupta dynasty. We consider Chandragupta I as the founder of Gupta dynasty as he was the one who started spreading this from a very small place to a mighty city named Patliputra. He was married to Kumara Devi. Uh, he, she was from Lichavigana and their son was Samudra Gupta. What Samudra, Samudra Gupta was a li, real combination of, we can say he was a genius of all type. Like he was a great musician, he was a great ruler, he was a great administrator. At the same time, he, he, uh, we got some gold coins where we have seen that he was a great musician also. He used to play Veena very well. So we, have, we got all these evidences. Now this Allahabad Prashasti, it stated that Samudra Gupta was the ruler who was, his kingdom was not only confined in the northern part of India, but he start, uh, started conquering the southern part also. He, this Prashasti described Samudra Gupta as a great warrior who uh, is there on the battlefield with his soldiers and he has many scars on his body which is described like they are the like like the pulse the wounds were there on his body as he was a, a ruler he was a warrior of 100 battles he was a great king he was compared with napoleon bonaparte also as he never lost any of his battles what it is written on the prashasti we can compare him with napoleon bonaparte and in the precious state it is written that he never lost any of the battles he fought against his enemies. He started conquering one after another places in the uh, starting from the north to the south. But remember we need to remember one thing that he never implies the same policies everywhere 
whatever the uh, kingdoms he has conquered. These descriptions also we can find in the Prashasti that how he uh, divided, how he uh, divided the way, uh, how to rule the, um, all the kingdoms and which must be beneficial for um, everyone of his subject and his uh, capital city also mainly. Samudra Gupta's uh, uh, whatever the uh, rulers they fought with Samudra Gupta and they lost the battle. They were nine in the Aryavarta. Aryavarta means in the northern India. Samudra Gupta captured their uh, territory and it was completely his rule over there. But the uh, other places like rural of, ruler of uh, Dakshinapata who was 12 rulers some of whose capitals were marked uh, uh, like the way that they surrendered uh, Samudra Gupta after they lost the battle and they then uh, they were allowed to rule again. The reason for that like it was not so easy for that uh, those days to control these 12 states from sitting in the north India uh, in, a, uh, in, in a place in the uh, northern place of India because uh, it was not so easy to commute every time to these all places. So naturally there will be a tendency for these all rulers to make them uh, independent again in the future. To control that what Samudra Gupta did he has given permission to rule their own territory but in uh, they they were uh, supposed to be under his control the places he has annexed they the rulers they need to uh, pay an annual tribute to Samudra Gupta actually that helped the economy of the state a lot with this annual tribute and um, Samudra Gupta was able to uh, may bring more prosperity in his uh, uh, for his kingdom but at the same time we can see that these all uh, kings were they were happy because they are ruling their own territory but but they are maintaining a good friendly relation with Gupta dynasty. Uh, the other way we have seen that some states like Assam, uh, coastal Bengal, Nepal number of Gana Sanghas were there and they, uh, they, they also they need to uh, pay tribute uh, but and they need to follow Samudra Gupta's order. Uh, they need to follow all the rules and re regulations but they were not under direct control of the uh, king. The rulers those who were a little outside the Kushanas and uh, some uh, Sri Lankans they submitted and uh, most of them were uh, they have a marital relation that these all places must follow a friendly and uh, good relation and they must not fight uh, when the enemy they must uh, give their army they must supply their help when the king is in danger the Samudra Gupta is in danger in this case in this way the territories whatever Samudra Gupta uh, captured defeated the rulers he actually divided them the way it is beneficial for his administration now I told you about genealogy Kumara Devi Chandragupta's uh, wife he was from Lichavi Gana. Now Gana we know that uh, that is a place of tribes where many of them they are there and many kings are there and they are giving a combined opinion to uh, control the administration. In this marriage Patliputra was a dowry from Kumara Devi's side and Chandragupta uh, the, he uh, he got he uh, owned the title of Maharaja Dhiras, the king of all kings. That means whatever the Ganas and other small kings were there, he was above them all, and he placed himself as Maharaja Dhiraj, and he started ruling this entire territory. Samudra Gupta also followed his father. He uh, he also got, uh, he also addressed title I have received this title as Maharaja Diraj he was a great king of all the ways. Samudra Gupta uh, turned figures of genealogies uh, on the latter uh, rulers of the dynasty such as his son like Chandragupta II. Here we can see that they are following the 
dynasty rule like Chandragupta one, his son Samudragupta and his son who uh, occupied the, um, who was the next ruler, he was addressed as Chandragupta two, his name was Chandragupta two, though later he has taken the another title uh, like Vikramaditya, a king who has the power like sun, he was uh, titled himself as Vikramaditya. And all these inscriptions, coins available from these his time period, Samudra Gupta's time period, and mainly this Prasasti, Allahabad Prasasti, that is a great help for us to know about them, and it's a great help for history also to know about exactly what happened at the time of the Guptas. Now we will be coming about Harshavardhana. Harshavardhana was a ruler, he was a little, uh, his story is a little different. Let me tell you the story first, then we will come to the uh, historical part, the fact what happened in Harshad's life. Harshavardhana's father, Prabhakar Vardhan, he was a ruler of Thaneswar. Now, he has, he had two daughter, two sons, Rajavardhan and the youngest one was Harshavardhan and one daughter, Rajasri. Now, Raj, after marriage, Rajasri his husband, Vyavarman, he was actually looking after these two youngest uh, rulers, uh, that is Rajavardhan and Harshavardhan, because uh, after Prabhakar Vardhan's death, there was no as such uh, guardian, guardian for them. Though Harshavardhan was young, youngest, he became the king because his brother, Rajavardhan, he uh, he was uh, killed treacherously by the ruler of Bengal and Assam and uh, then uh, even uh, his, um, he, because they wanted to take the revenge against the uh, treacherous killing of uh, their brother-in-law Grihavarman. Rajasri was about to commit Sati when Harshavardhan rescued her and then uh, Rajasri spent her entire life for in spread of education and she was the first lady vice chancellor of Lord Nalanda University. Harshavardhan was a king, his poet Banavatta, who has written that, uh, written Harsha Charita and we can get a good description about Harshavardhan uh, in this book. Zhang Wang also spent some time, uh, uh, that is Yuan Sang, he spent some time at, at Harsha's court and even his account, whatever he has written, that they are also a great uh, help to get information about Harshavardhan's rule. Now after Harshavardhan, though he was successful to capture many of the places in the northern India, he was not that successful uh, to capture places that go beyond Narmada. Here we have seen another ruler, his name is Pulakeshi II who stopped him on the bank of Narmada and it is said that Harsha was no more Harsha. Harsha literally name meaning of this word Harsha means pleasure. So Harsha has no had no pleasure because he was not able to cross Narmada river. river. And uh, it is said that after this Harsha uh, was his mindset also changed and he stopped warfare and he started, uh, he followed, uh, he accepted Buddhism. Though he accepted Buddhism, he was a uh, worshipper of sun god and Shiva also. And he used to spend a lot for the benefit of his subject. So this is about Harshavardhana. What we have seen here that uh, Harsha as a king, he also gave a lot of donation for building monasteries as well as temples and he spent a lot for the common people of his territory. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.